In part one of first time elk hunting, we didn't see a lot of action. No shots were fired, we didn't see any animals passing by our location. However, the focus of our films is not the shots and the killing of animals, it's actually more in general the experience of a hunt. Or maybe more importantly, a first time hunter's experience of a hunt. If you are after fast shots and hot action, maybe this is the wrong film for you. But if you're interested of how hunting actually sort of happens and maybe learn some of the skills you need to participate in a hunt, stay tuned and see what happens in part two. Day two on the weekend hunt. So uh, yesterday we were out in the morning and after lunch and uh, had a fantastic day, clear blue sky, a nice sun, unfortunately no elks. They are letting the dogs out on the southern side of this lake and then one dog will go north and then one dog will go south and hopefully they'll push the elks towards us. As you guys can see, we're actually standing quite open. But again, hunting elks, uh, it's actually not so much about concealment or, uh, how shall I say, being stealthy. Because when the dogs push them, they actually just run from the dogs. And then if you stand in the right place, they will run out in front of you. We have good... Uh, shooting distances here, good ranges. We, uh, we have measured the ranges with our uh, range, range meter, distance meter. And uh, we, uh, we can shoot here up to, well, I would say 230 meters. Oops, look, look, a fox, a fox. Now we're not allowed to shoot foxes, but it's fun to see them. That was a quite nice fox. It had a really bushy tail and uh, a nice white tip on it. He said fox, but I thought he said ox. And I got really excited that a big elk had just run over. There's a house just there. Yeah, I know. It's interesting because this is this is uh, again one of these like hunting situations. You need to understand that you, as a hunter, even though you're part of a team, have been put in a position where you're responsible for your shot. Mm. So we have this lake, and then on the other side of this lake, yeah. we have this uh, house. It's a, it's a fair boot, so it's like not a permanent house, nevertheless, yeah, it, yeah. Is, it is a house. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you could, you, you, you would assume that they know that there's nobody there. It can actually even be somebody's from this team's house. Nevertheless, you don't know. And you can't even trust somebody saying, mm. oh, there's nobody there. Mm. You as a shooter are responsible for your shot. So if the animal comes out, then you sort of assess the situation and think that it's in the direction of that house. You can't shoot, period. <coughs> and and this, this, is, this is really one of the things I think it's so important to stress to new hunters. And in this case, though, we've got like an angle downwards, right? Mm. Which would make it, I mean, as long as we don't shoot over the ridge there, mm. you've got a, something to catch the bullet. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, when an animal comes out, the first thing you sort of look at, is it the right animal? So if, if, if there's a specific animal you're allowed to hunt, you need to know that it is what it is. Mm. So it's not a, you know, human or whatever. So you have to, first of all, what? Ooh, a shot. Shots. But that was good news. So we have one calf down and that's some meat coming in and we're allowed to shoot big elks. So now we're looking forward to that's the big cool. champion ox with parabol antennas on its head. <laughs> <laughs> what are the chances? <laughs> Should we not go help them with it? Pull uh, it out? No, it's far away, but they, they do that later. The shooter will go forward and clean it now. Aha, uh -huh, 
now they have a, they have a big elk in range, a cow, but the dog is behind it, so they can't. Uh... Oh, another shot. Two. Two. Uh, they shot. They shot the cow, but it's not laying. They shoot and miss. It sounded like they shot on a cow, but the cow did not go down, so they either hit bad or missed completely. But let's see, I can't really understand what they said. No. <laughs> so they shot the cow, the cow is down, so now we're back to calf. <laughs> Jeez, that, that went quick, eh? Yeah. <laughs> So what will happen now? Well, uh, you heard on the radio that uh, one of the dog drivers who owns the dog that drove the calf and the cow will clean it. So he's cleaning it right now in the forest where it lays. Mm. It sounded like if it was not too far away from the road, so maybe a couple of guys pull it out on the road. Mm. And I'm sure we'll have to pick it up in our truck later. Mm. Or um, if it's if it's far from the road, they'll take the LE uh, pull machine thingy, mm. go out and get it and take it up on the road. So that's the elk pulling machine. It's like a snow scooter sort of band, but then it has wheels on the side to steady it on uneven ground. And uh, you can drive with that everywhere, really. Ah, they have found that they have patrons here, and then we roll it out. It's over. That was the first time I've ever seen a dead elk just shot like that. We just pulled it up on that. <laughs> I'm looking right now at, at a dead elk with its legs up, still steaming, being pulled behind the truck in front of us. It's pretty incredible, hey? I guess you've seen it before, but uh, first time for me anyway, and I can say it is really something. It's a big animal. It's like fresh, still steaming. Uh, I'm not grossed out, but it's still a bit, it's a bit overwhelming in a way, like it kind of churns in your guts. Well, and this, then is, this is, this is what, how should I say, 
proves that you can be a hunter is that you actually can take care of what you shoot yeah. and, and deal with that and actually yeah. still appreciate, you know, getting the meat and eating the meat. And some people just like to go out and shoot, but they can't no. really, you know, deal with what they have yeah. uh, and shoot shots. And also I think, you know, I, I want to film it and I think it's good that we film it, but at the same time you don't want to be like res disrespectful to the animal. Like I also want to respect that wow, this animal has just given its life for us to have meat and that should be respected. Now we're get, getting the second one. We're actually going to go get the calf and get a cow. So we started off with Beno Brook from Brook. Ja, 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 Okay, now we got the cow and the calf all hooked up on the trailer. We're off for the second sort of round of hunting. Um, what did you think, Robin? Yeah, uh, it was great. I mean, two elks, one calf, one uh, big one. So we, we're back to calf. But, uh, you know, it's also fun to move a bit and to yeah, do something. Yeah, for sure. Like standing there. If you can't shoot, then it's, uh, it's quite fun to actually sort of do the work. Yeah, it was really cool. <laughs> yeah. Other than that, now all others have had lunch and we haven't. <laughs> well, I was pretty shocked to see these guys standing there by the dead elk, just eating some core, eating some sausages by the big steaming pile of guts. So I was like, mm, yeah, I don't know if I'd have such a big appetite. <laughs> yummy sausage. <laughs> I was just talking to one of the older guys here, and he's, he said he's been out hunting for 50 years. He said, he said there's been a big difference since when he was a kid. So he said that when, and I said, like, in what way? He said, oh, there's a big difference. When we would go out then, there were so many more elks. He said it would be not unusual to shoot 10 in one, like, one of these sittings like we do today. And now we feel lucky to have gotten two. by here and one of the dog guys saying that uh, the dog is following an elk but then it went quiet so I don't know what happened but this is the closest uh, we've heard the dog I think I'm going It's a shame.
So this is our lunch while, uh, while we were dragging the elk. Uh, everybody else had lunch, I think. Normally people would gather and make a fire and barbecue some sausage, but I think the break was so long, so I'm, I'm pretty convinced they all had lunch. So this is our lunch. Egg sandwich and coffee. Not bad. So now you can tell me because I want to ask anyway. What, do we, what did they say? We're going to the slackery. Yeah, we're, we're on the way to the slaughterhouse to, I guess, take care of these two elks that, um, that we shot today. So hopefully we can film some of that. So, so they're not going to hang the animals like normal, they're just going to cut it? Uh, well, I'm sure they aren't going to hang it. I mean, we, we'll see, I don't know how they do now, but normally an animal should hang. Depending on how warm or cold it is, an animal should hang so that the meat matures and becomes more tender before you actually cut it to pieces. So, Normally what we would do is to go down to the butcher now, take the skin off, head, hoofs and stuff like that, uh, clean away all the rest of the intestines such as lung, hearts and stuff, um, throat, uh, and, then, and then you basically hang it up and just let it hang. But I, I don't know if they will do that now because then I guess somebody will have to come here during the weekend yeah. and sort of, you know, take it apart. Yeah. So um, we'll see. See how it works. Now our meat's been delivered to us, we didn't have to go get it. It was very kindly delivered to our home.